good evening, and welcome to another episode of Ondiavari Presents, the series where I bring you the creepiest real-life stories and locations from around the world. Before we begin, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon so you never miss a future episode. If you enjoy this episode, be sure to give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. Now sit back, turn off the lights, and let's begin. Throw away for obvious reasons. Sorry for the crappy mobile formatting. This event was one of many that my ex-family and I experienced while living in Hell House. The haunting had ultimately torn our family apart. It may or may not be connected, but I did find arrowheads and Civil War era bullets buried in the backyard. I am an avid fossil collector, so that's how I stumbled upon them. Activity had been going on for years. And one night, I was outside smoking a cigarette on the back porch. Most of the side of the house was obscured by a brick wall that you would have to walk past in order to see it. You could see the woods and the pool just fine if you looked straight ahead. As I am smoking, I felt that familiar presence that had been visiting me all these years. My back was to the brick wall. I think it was early fall or late summer. I froze on the spot. The presence felt huge, smothering and all-encompassing. It felt menacing and angry. I felt surrounded. I started shaking, but I couldn't move. Then I heard through the leaves, thud, 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 thud. Thud. The footsteps were absolutely massive. It was too big to be human. It had two legs. I have zero doubt about this fact. This had happened a couple of times. I just didn't realise it at the time. I could feel it right around the corner of the brick partition. I couldn't breathe. Its presence was smouldering. I could not think or move. The air became cold and thick. I gathered up some courage and whipped my head around the brick partition. Nothing was there. I tossed my cigarette and ran inside. I went into my room and just shook for what felt like an hour, trying to make sense of what had just happened. This is just one of many encounters I had in Hell House, and this is 100% true. This is part one of a many-part series involving this hell house. Since this one was so short, prepare for part two. In my last post, I talked about hell house and how when I would smoke, you could occasionally hear something approaching from behind This was well into the haunting. The haunting originally started when I was a very young child. There was weird stuff that happened throughout the day, but then there would be that one presence. When we moved to Hell House, I hated it before we even decided to buy it and I begged my parents not to. When we actually moved in, the haunting got much worse. The haunting started off with small things here and there and it would progress into their antics. My ex-brother and sisters would have experiences too. My biological mother went crazy in that house, literally. In order to tell more of that story in future posts, I will need to talk about some of the things that happened and what some of the phenomena was like. Before we moved to Hell House, my earliest experiences was something visiting me in my crib. I would vault over the edge and bang on my parents' door in the middle of the night. During the day, you would hear an oldies radio station playing. When you went into the room, nothing would be playing. I could hear my mum calling my name, and then she would deny it. I would play my Nintendo 64 and then feel that one horrible presence. 
that would send me running up out of the basement. I consider this type of stuff pretty mild phenomena. It really upped the ante once we moved. You are welcome to disagree with me, but it followed us to the new house. My dad was an engineer, and Hell House was pretty big. I hated it from the moment I stepped foot in it. Every fibre of my being was screaming to get out and to get far, far away from that place. I spent 13 years in that godforsaken place. Here are some of the things that happened to my ex-family and I. When I was in high school, that one presence started visiting me in my room almost every night. I would try to keep the lights on, and they would explode. At the time, I thought that I had wet hands, or they were oily, and that was the cause. I would sit on my bed and have a sensation of being choked, strangled. I would take my shirt off and necklace to get relief, and nothing would help. I became very dark in my thinking, and angry. I think some of this was puberty, but definitely egged on by what was in the house. Other people my age did not have the same feelings as I. I began waking up with bruises that didn't make any sense. I was a competitive dancer and gymnast, so I wrote it off as that. I had bruises that looked like I had been pinched. These types of bruises became routine, the worse things got. I began waking up with handprints on me as if something had grabbed my wrist. Sometimes I would be sitting somewhere and my skin would get very, very hot. It would heat up, and a scratch, a bite, a burn, would appear. I was completely oblivious to this at the time. I thought it was just my allergies. Sensations of bugs crawling on my skin in the middle of the night. One day I came home from school and began to walk up the stairs. I stopped because there was a sea of fleas at the top. They were all collectively moving away from me. When I went to get one of my parents... There was nothing there. We searched the whole house. This happened in my room once, too. My sibling shined a light on a black spot in the corner of her room, and it darted out of the window. She said it looked like a 3D shadow. My other sibling said that in the middle of the night, he would be paralysed with the same 3D black figure standing over his bed. When you would be in the house, you would see shadows moving between the rooms, Sometimes you would think it was mum or dad, and when you followed, nothing was there. My husband saw black shadows with red eyes in the woods. Some were very tall. The longer my biological mother stayed in the house, the meaner she got. She would freak out over nothing, and her eyes would go black. My husband also witnessed this. For whatever reason, I became a target for all of her hatred. She began bullying me and leaving me out of family things and turning the rest of the family against me. My biological mum started to not take care of herself. She smelled terrible, slept with her makeup on, started wearing her makeup really poorly compared to how well it was done before we moved there. Her hair was fried from over-processing and her haircut looked awful. She would make up things that people did and you were not allowed to disagree with her. It got to the point that you could not prove your answer when it came to science if it contradicted her. She would relegate against you by breaking or taking your things. She loved to sabotage friendships and relationships. Sometimes you could feel that one presence in the room when she was going on a tirade. She would take my siblings' things and then tell them I took it. She was only happy when we were all fighting. This was completely out of character for her before we moved there. It's easy to write her off as narcissistic or some other mental illness. I think perhaps that is partially true, but whatever was in the house somehow instigated her to be worse. A lot how being in the house was very oppressive, and I also became dark in my thinking and feelings. My biological sister got heavy into drugs, And I think it was to cope with the constant screaming, fighting and yelling and whatever the thing was that was also tormenting her. I don't know if it counts as evidence per se, but things were constantly breaking and going wrong. If it could go wrong, it did. 
I kept reptiles and fish so I would get bugs from outside and keep them in a bin. Once I watched the black shadow float over the bin. When I woke up that morning, all the insects and worms were dead. I was also constantly finding dead things around our house. Our neighbours were equally weird. It's hard to explain. Things would switch places while your back was turned. Things would outright disappear. And then after searching the entire house, be where you first looked. You know what I mean. Keys are an example. I was sleep deprived from the thing waking me up or having sleep paralysis. Had it been sleep paralysis alone, I would have chalked it up as hypnagogia, hypnopompia, and gotten on medication. The psychiatrist I met with, to be sure, cleared me of mental illness as well. Now that I have given a sort of history and explanation of the things that went on in the house, I can go into more detail about certain things I had happen. At one point, I had a name for the one presence. At first, I started calling it Taco to make it less scary. I called another one Slenderman because of how similar it looked to Slenderman, the cartoon creepy pasta. I eventually figured out they were the same entity. I will post more soon. This sounds like a truly horrific experience. And to be so young to experience it too would be horrifying. There are more stories to go with this hell house, so stay tuned for them. Thank you all for watching. I do hope you enjoyed this presentation. Be sure to let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And remember to leave a like if you enjoyed this video. You can follow me on most social media and even chat with me over at the Outcast Discord server. If you really enjoy what I do, consider supporting me on Patreon from as little as $2 a month. There are rewards, sneak peeks, and other Patreon-only exclusives. There is now official Join the Cult merch available from Teespring, so be sure to check that out too. All links are available in the description below. Thank you again, and remember, it's always scarier when it's real. Good night.